Praise the Lord, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Great Award AME Church YouTube channel. Amen. If you haven't already done so, we want to ask you to subscribe to our channel. Amen. You can subscribe right down there. Hit the little uh, subscribe button and you can hit the bell and you'll get notifications every week when we download a new video. Uh, today, we are starting a new sermon series entitled Breaking Bad. Uh, it's about breaking free from the bad habits, the addictions, the compulsions, and the dysfunction that sometimes we deal with. Amen. Even as Christians. And so we want want to ask you to come on every week, amen, and take a look at, at all the, these videos. We promise that this is going to bless you and going to take your faith to the, to the next level. As always, we want to invite you that if, if you would like to give, you can download the Givelify app, uh, put in your debit card information, and you can put, uh, you can donate money anytime you would like to. And as always, always uh, if you're ever in the Houston era, area, we want to invite you to come and to uh, to worship with us right here at 6822 Arabella uh, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. God bless you, and we hope you enjoy this program. Thank you so much.
Amen. Hallelujah. He deserve our rest, praise, our worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He give us his best every day. Amen. We are here today. Hallelujah. Oh God. Well, glory to God. Thank God. Hallelujah. If it have not been, hallelujah, for the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Who is on my side? Well, well, well.
belongs to you. Come on, anybody, hallelujah belongs. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, lift that up all over the building and say, My hallelujah. hallelujah. to destroy but to fulfill for verily I say unto you till the heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no ways pass from the law till all be fulfilled so whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments somebody say break whosoever therefore for shall break one of these commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And on last week we began this sermon series entitled Breaking Bad. Amen. Breaking Bad. We're talking about breaking bad habits, addictions, and the dysfunctions that sometimes hold us down. I want to pick up right there. Why don't you stand to your feet? Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. I want to pick up right there. Scripture for today is going to begin at verse 20. And conclude somewhere around verse 26. For I say, verse 20, Matthew 5, verse 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shall not kill. Someone say thou shall not kill. And whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, this is Jesus talking, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry, someone say angry. angry. Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka, or in other words, traitor, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Verse 23, therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled. Someone say reconciled. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. Verse 26, Verily I say unto to thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing or the last penny. 
As you take your seat today, amen, I want to preach today from the subject, Killing Me Softly. Killing Me Softly. Thank you so much, musicians. Thank you so much, ushers. Killing Me Softly. Some of you all are familiar with the song made famous by Roberta Flack and then brought back into popular appeal by Lauren Hill and the Fugees. Also sang at one time by Frank Sinatra. The song, Killing Me Softly, Strumming My Pain With His Fingers. Singing my life with his words. Killing me softly with his song. Killing me softly with his song. Telling my whole life with his words. With his song. But I want to let you know today that there is something that tends to kill church folks softly. Something that, that sits just beyond the surface. That I, I would contend to you that in any church in America, you can find this right under the surface. You'll find that there is anger and unexpressed emotions. There are things that we have not dealt with. That there are things that are still on our nerves, but have been unspoken. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would contend with you that, that if you ever want to find some people who are angry and upset, if you ever want to find some black folk who have some unresolved issues, you need look no further than your local church. Because in the local church, what you will find is you'll find uh, that, that the stewards are sometimes mad at the pastor. And, and the trustees are mad at the stewards. And the ushers are mad at the choir, and the and the choir is is mad at at, at the stewardesses, and and nobody is nobody is mad at the stewardesses. I'm sorry, because the stewardesses are the nicest little old ladies, amen. And can't nobody be mad at them, amen. And so what do we do? We we bite our lip, we we bite our tongue, and and we hold on to things and, and we suppress stuff for year after year after year. Our anger turns into our to resentment. Our, our resentments turn into a grudge. Our, our grudges begin to turn into a feud and, 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 and everybody is smiling each, in each other's face. Uh, but on Sunday morning we, we say to ourselves, she better not come and sit next to me. Am I talking real in the house? Yeah. Amen. You can either say out your amen. Yeah. The, the, the truth be told, if, if the cover were pulled over, the truth be told, I, I would be able to look out here in the, in the congregation and I would be able to see that she got a problem with him and, and he has a problem with her and, and this family has a problem with that family and ain't nobody saying anything. Uh, but can I tell you that, that Jesus has the prescription for us today. Uh, that, that he says to us in, in our scripture, he, he speaks to us and he begins to talk to us about this thing about anger. Can, can I tell you a little bit about anger before we go on? Uh, that the anger, anger is what is called a secondary emotion. You see, it's called a secondary emotion because, because many times when we are angry, that is not the only feeling that's there. Uh, that, that when we get angry, when we get angry, uh, our anger is usually actually just covering up 
uh, the primary emotion. Uh, you, you see, you see, uh, you see, we get angry when we are hurt. Uh, we, we get angry when we uh, feel that we are threatened or something around us or our comfort is threatened. We get angry that, 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 when, that when, when we are hurt, when somebody hurt our feelings, we're angry. When, when we are afraid, when, when, when we're scared somebody's going to take our place or our position, we get angry. When, 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 we, when we are afraid that we have been forgotten and kicked to the curb, we, we feel angry. Uh, but the truth be told, the anger is not the first emotion. The, the first emotion is that we were, we were afraid. The, the first emotion was, was that we were hurt. The, the first emotion was that we were sad. The, the first emotion is, is, is that something else was messing with us and because we did not know how to deal with that first emotion we got angry can, can I tell you why we get angry we, we get angry because anger uh, comes with power that, that when we get angry uh, we, we get all riled up and and, and, and we get we, we, we our, 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 our feelings are intensified and, and we feel we go into what psychologists call fight or flight mode and because we don't back down for nobody, we, we, we get angry and we, get, we put up our dukes. Uh, we, we get angry. We, we, anybody in here ever had to deal with some anger in your life? Uh, my Lord, my Lord. Angry at the job. Angry, angry uh, uh, with folks in your family who borrow money and never pay it back. I, I just hit a nerve right there. Uh, angry because things haven't gone the way that you want it to go. Just, just sometimes, sometimes you just angry. You don't even know why you angry. I, I'm just angry. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just angry. Can, can, can I tell you something else about about anger? Uh, anger, anger is a secondary emotion. Not only because because there are other emotions that come before it. Uh, but check this out. But if you notice, if you notice that in our development, uh, anger does not show up until later on. Uh, check this out. That that as children, check this out. As children. Uh, children come into the world uh, before they are able to put together a rational thought, uh, before they are able to articulate their needs and want. Children are already able to tap into emotions. Check this out. That, that e our emotions are so deep that nobody ever has to teach you emotions. That each and every person comes into this world with the ability to feel. Yes. Check this out. That, that, that no matter uh, how severely uh, 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 mentally uh, uh, retarded a, a person may be, no, no matter how uh, 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 handicapped they may, they may be, uh, that each and every person has the ability to cry. They, they all had the ability to feel feelings. Uh, that we all had, the, from, from, from a little child, that Jonathan, at, at, at seven months old, already can, can let you know uh, when he's irritated. He, he can let you know when he's hungry. He can let you know when he's happy. He, he can let you know uh, when, when he don't like going, what's going on. He can let you know that he's happy. He can let you know all of those things. If you want to find some folk who cannot tell you what they are feeling, you got to come to church. That, that, that I contend to you uh, that, that it's only when we get older that we get divorced from our feelings. That, that the truth be told, uh, many of us wake up every day, and if you, if you were to ask yourself the question, "How are you feeling?" We 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 give this 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 little generic. We say, "I'm feeling fine." <laughs> well, guess what? Fine ain't an emotion. Are you happy? Or are you sad? Uh, 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 how, how are you really feeling? The, the truth be told, many of us walk through life glossing over our emotions, not really knowing how we feel. 
Uh, but then Jesus com comes to us and, and, and he tells us uh, that, that check this out is that, that if we are not in, tap, in tune with our emotions, that our emotions, because, because everywhere you look there are anti-bullying campaigns. Uh, and they, they wonder, is this, is this generation just soft? Is what, what's going on with this generation? But, but can I tell you that, that when you begin to look at uh, how many young people are taking their own lives because of cyberbullying, uh, but be, because their, their self-esteem has been so worn down, uh, be, because, because somebody ha, ha, has said something to them that, 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 ha, that, has, that, that has made them think less of themselves. Listen, we've got to be careful of, of how we treat one another because it does have an effect on us. All right. All right. Amen. And Jesus tells us that, that we have to be careful of these things called emotions. He, he says, listen, if, 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 you, if you carry around uh, anger, and listen, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about sporadic anger. Uh, he, he's talking about long-term anger. You, you know that, that anger where something happened to you way back in the day, and, and you still haven't gotten over it. And you still say, you still say in your heart, they better not say nothing to me. Uh, he, he's talking about, he said, if you're, if you're care, he said, he said, they said back, he said, Moses says that thou shalt not kill. But, but listen, he said, listen, if, if you're carrying around that type of toxic emotion, he said, listen, you are in, in danger of the judgment. He said that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause is in danger of the judgment. And whoever shall say to him, Raka, is in danger of the council. And whosoever shall call him a fool is in danger of the hellfire. In, in other words, what he's saying is that the anger that we carry in our heart is actually inflicting damage on us every day. That, that the, 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 this... The, the, these emotions that we haven't processed, that we haven't we haven't dealt with, they they are actually they are actually uh, 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 imprisoning us right now. Nelson, Nelson Mandela said this. He said, "Listen." He says that uh, that that when you are angry with with your brother or with your sister, that it's literally like drinking poison and hoping it kills them. That the, the, the truth be told. Uh, truth be told, what happens is uh, somebody does something to us and we get angry with them and they go on about their business and we still stay angry and they don't went on with their life. And, and the truth be told, we're, we're, we're inflicting more damage on ourselves and the truth be told, they have forgotten all about it. And I, I, I understand, I understand that, 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 uh, that, that, that somebody will say, well, listen, I, I, I can't just let stuff go. I, I, listen, I'm not telling you to let it go. Amen. Because sometimes we erroneously tell people uh, that you've got to forgive and forget. But can I tell you that, that, that the truth be told, it's impossible to forget. Because if I were to take uh, a poll through the church today, uh, that there's a whole lot of stuff that you wish you could forget. That, that there, there, there are some things that happened in your past that, that if you could just wipe your mind's memory of some stuff, there, there are some things that you know uh, that are not benefiting you right now. But, but, the, but the truth be told, that even though you can't forget, the truth be told, we got to learn how to forgive. That, that's what, that's what, that's what Jesus tells us. He tells us that we have to learn how to deal with our issues. Check, check out what he says. Check out what he says in verse number 23. He says, listen, he says that, he says that emotions are so powerful that church by itself ain't going to fix it. It's in the text. It's in the text. He says that your emotions are so powerful that, that, that worship by itself cannot fix the emotions in your heart. It's in verse 23. He says, if thou, if you are bringing your gift to the altar, 
If you're coming to worship, and on the way to worship, you remember that you have something against your brother. He don't say come to church and worship and it's going to be all right. No, that ain't what he said. He said that if you remember that you have something against your brother, he said that even on your way to church, you need to make a detour from church. You need to go and get it right with your brother and then bring your gift to the altar. Uh, can, can, I, can I suggest to somebody in here today? that the reason why you can't really worship effectively in church is because you're carrying a whole bunch of baggage that's holding you down. I, I, just, I just helped somebody in here today. Uh, la last, last month, I, I preached a four-sermon series on, on the anatomy of worship, and you still can't have open up your mouth and give God praise. The, the, reason why, the reason why you can't open up your mouth and give God praise, the reason why your heart can, can, can't be as grateful to God as you want it to be is because your heart is full of too much other stuff that Jesus says you've got to let that stuff go. He said, he said, listen, if you are on your way to the altar, he said, he said, he said, I want you to go and get reconciled with your brother and then bring it to the altar. Can, can I suggest something? This is dangerous right here. Can, can, I, can I suggest, I know we sing a song uh, that, that said that you got to, you got to uh, bring your all to the altar. But can I suggest to you today that there are some stuff that you need to tell to more than just Jesus? Wow. <laughs> wow. Woo, I'm going to help somebody in this house today. Uh-huh. The, 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 the text would suggest to me that, that, that it's not good enough to just tell God. That the truth be told that, listen, that if I really have something against somebody else, that I need to tell them too. That, that I need to deal with the, with the elephant in the room and then I can go talk to God all about it. Can I, can I, can I suggest, can I walk lightly in here today? Uh, the, the, the truth be told that all of us are a part of families and, and in every family there is a secret. And the truth be told that with the secrets come shame. And with the shame uh, come, come, come issues that, that, that have been affecting us very deeply for years. But can I tell you today that the only way that we are going to be free uh, in our emotions is to be able to come out into the light. Uh, G Jesus said in, in his life that everything that is done in the dark has to come to the light because it's only in the light that God is able to heal. It's, it's only in the light that God is able to redeem. It, it's only in the light that God is able to turn situations around. The, the, the truth be told, we, we've, been, we've been trying to get God to heal stuff that we've been hiding. <laughs> but but can, I, can I suggest to you that, 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 that throughout the Gospels, throughout the Gospels, uh, I want to suggest to you that Jesus never heals anything that people are still hiding. That as long as they are hiding it, Jesus ain't hidden, ain't, ain't healing it. But, but as soon as they make their way to the altar, as soon as they make their way, even, even if it's just by touching the hem of his garment, that, that, it, that, that, that he tells that woman, he said, he said, daughter, he said, you have been healed and made whole. Why? Because the thing that you've been hiding for all these 12 long years, oh, because you brought it to me, because you brought it out in the open, now I'm able to do some surgery on you and get it right. Now, 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 before, before I, I be guilty of false advertising, can, can, I, can I also just, just give you this caveat? Uh, can, can, I, can I warn you and, and tell you that getting things out in the open is not always comfortable? A matter of fact, matter of fact, it's uncomfortable. Uh, and matter of fact, that's the reason why you are hiding all this stuff 
in the first place. Uh, be, be, because, 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 because I didn't want to tell the truth be, because I knew that I would look bad in the story. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to tell the truth because, because I was afraid of what you were going to say. I, I didn't want to tell the truth because, because I thought that it would be explosive. But, but can I tell you that when we don't let the lid off of things, when, when we bottle them up, that the truth be taught, all, all that happens is it becomes a powder keg. And, and next thing you know, one spark will set you off. I, I'm going to get out your way. I, I'm going to get out your way. But, but we're learning how to break bad. Uh, G Jesus says, check this out. He says in verse 20, 25, he says, he says, I want you to make sure that you agree with thine adversary quickly. Someone say quickly. He says, agree. He says, I want you to agree with your adversary quickly. Someone say quickly. Hold on, wait. Check this out. He says, I want you to agree with the enemy, with the adversary, with, with that person, I want you to agree with them quickly. Somebody say quickly. Why, why, why do I want you to say quickly? Because, because listen, the, we, we have this saying, we have this saying, and it's so false. We say time heals all wounds. Can I tell you that not only is that not true medically, but that ain't true in any way. I, I just, I just want, I just want you that, 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 that if you, if you, if you have an issue, if you have, if, if, if you, if you, if you break your arm, if you are, uh, if you get stabbed, <laughs> I, I, I dare you to say time is gonna heal all wounds. No, time is gonna allow for for for, for bacteria to in, to infect it. Time is going to allow for, for that thing to, to, to get infected and it to get even worse than what it is. Know that when you have an issue, what you need to start doing is you need to start applying uh, some, some, some medication to that thing immediately. Uh, the problem with, with many of us today is that many of us, uh, uh, things happen in our life and we let things fester. We, 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 we let things fester and, and check this out. And when we let it fester, check this out. Not only do we have to deal with what happened, we have to deal with why we didn't say nothing about what happened when it happened. <laughs> check, check, check this out. Check this out. Uh, am I the only one in here? Am I the only one in here that when I was a kid, amen, I'd be running through the house, amen, uh, and, and, and I would and I would break something, Amen. I, it might be something little, might be something small, Amen. Uh, I break something, Amen. And uh, I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared, Amen. Uh, I was like, I, I know I'm gonna get a whooping for this one. And so, and so what would I do? I try to just put it back up there, <laughs> like did that happen? Uh, hold on, wait. I might try to get some glue and put it back together again. And I put it up there, amen. And, and, and listen, and it will work for a little bit. Mama wouldn't even see it, amen. Wouldn't, wouldn't even notice it, wouldn't even notice it. It, it was something in her curio cabinet. I done, I, I done went and shook the curio cabinet and it's broke, amen. And, uh, and, and, and later on, maybe, maybe this is the personal testimony, I don't know, amen. Praise the Lord. Later on, amen, we had some guests come over, amen. They looking in the curio cabinet and they, and, and they looking at all the nice stuff that she's gathered in her travel. And say, oh, what, what? I see this right here. It looks like it's broken. And, and Lord have mercy. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sweating bullets now. Be because, because, because not only, not only did I not say anything about it, but see, I've let it fester for so long that now, now that I'm, now I didn't embarrass her about it. Uh-huh. And, and now I'm really going to get it. Be because not only do I have the initial 
uh, the initial sin, now I got all the lies I told to go along with it. Can, can I tell somebody in here today? That's the reason why Jesus said you got to agree with your adversary quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, just tell them I know I messed up. Uh, tell them tell, I said something I should not have said. I, I did something I should not have done. I, I went somewhere I, I, I should not have gone. And listen, and I know you're going to be mad right now, but listen, that, that you might be mad right now, but you'd be really mad if I don't say nothing about it. He says, he says, agree with thine adversary quickly while you're on the way. Because at any time, your, your adversary will deliver you to the judge, and the judge will deliver you to the officer, and, and that will be cast into prison. In, in other words, he, what he's saying is, he's saying that, that if you don't get stuff straight quick, uh, it's going to be a cycle effect, and it's going to get worse. And worse and worse and worse. And can I tell you that, 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 that despite what you may think, that, that, that the psychologists tell us that it is unresolved emotions that imprison us. So somebody's wondering why, why am I why am I talking about emotions in, in a series called Breaking Bad? Psychologists tell us that at the root of every addiction. That at the root of every family dysfunction, at the root of every bad habit, are, is usually some unresolved emotions. You see, you see, you see what happens is uh, we, we think that the problem is drinking. We, we think that the problem is drugs. We think that the problem is, is cigarettes or or, 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 or that it's, or it's running around town, amen. But the truth be told, uh, we've tried quitting drinking by ourselves, and that didn't work. Uh, you, you tried to put down the, the prescription pain pills by yourself, and it didn't work. But the truth be told, it's not really the drugs and the alcohol that you're dealing with. The, the, what you are really dealing with is the things that make you pick up the alcohol. The, the thing that you're really dealing with is the thing that really makes you pick up those pain pills. The, you see, the, the truth be told, uh, before you got to the pain pills and, and to the drugs and, to, and picked up the cigarette, the, the, the reason why you did it is because you were hurting on the inside. You see, you, you, you woke up, you woke up that day, and you didn't even know why you didn't feel good. You just knew that you wanted to feel better. And, and, and that's what happens to addicts all the time. They, they try as hard as they can to let go of the things that they are addicted to. They, they try to get rid of one thing, and check this out, and sometimes you ain't able to get rid of one thing, and as soon as you get rid of one thing, you pick up something else. Like, can, I, am I the only person in here uh, that I, I let go of one thing, and next thing you know, I'm getting angry every time? That, 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 that you let go of this, and you pick up that. But the truth be told, it is not really that thing at all. It's really all those things uh, in my past, all that anger, all that frustration, all that sadness, all that hurt. And if I would ever just bring it to Jesus, if I would ever just deal with my issues, uh, then I know I wouldn't have to pick up that thing anymore. Who am I talking to? Come on, Eddie, we're about ready to go home. Who, who am I talking to in here today that, 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 that there are some things that have been messing me up my entire life and, and, and as tried as I may I, I, I tried to give it over to Jesus and it just seemed like Jesus would never take it away but can I tell you Jesus is a word about taking away that addictive substance Jesus is, is concerned about taking away the hurt and the pain that causes you to go to that thing uh, check this out because Jesus, Jesus, the, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says that thou shalt have no other God before me. Right. Can I suggest to you today that, 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 that the source of every bad thing, every habit, every addiction, every dysfunction, that it is actually idolatry. How do you say that, preacher? 
Uh, because, because, because every time you feel bad, you go to that thing. But God said, every time you feel bad, I wanted you to come to me. <laughs> he, he said, he said, he said, he said, when you were sad, you picked up the bottle. <laughs> he said, but when, when you were sad, I, I wanted you to pick up your bottle. <laughs> Uh, you picked up a cigarette. Uh, but when you were angry, I, I, I wanted you to, 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 to go to me in prayer. He said, he said that, that when you were frustrated, uh, you, you started cussing and fussing. Uh, but when you were frustrated, I, I wanted you to have a little talk with Jesus. Who am I talking to in here in this place? Uh, that when we begin to put God uh, at the place where he's supposed to be, uh, when we begin to worship God, when we begin to use his word in the way that God says that listen I want to heal everything that's broken in your life you've been avoiding situations for the last 20 years but if you would just trust me I'll help you to turn that situation around who am I talking to in here today you've been carrying a bunch of junk for way too long but God says today is a day that I want you to of these bad things, the opposite of addiction, the opposite of dysfunction, the opposite of bad habits, biblically, it is what we call peace. It's called peace. And, 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 and one thing I know about church folks, not, not from what you say, but, but from what you do, is that most church folks don't have peace in their life. We, we come with anxiety, we come with issues, with dysfunctions, we, 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 we are searching for peace that we cannot find. Now, let me tell you, see, you see, you see many times we, 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 we've been hurt so much that we think that, that in order to get rid of the hurt, I need to take control of the situation. But, but you see, Jesus said, he said that there is a different definition of peace. And he said that, listen, that, that I want you to cast all your cares on me. And he says, and I will give you peace. Check, check this out. He, he says that, listen, that, that I, want, I want the peace that you have to be the peace that passes all understanding. In other words, the peace that you have is not going to be peace that means avoiding issues. Uh, the, the peace that you're going to have is not going to be the peace uh, that, 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 means that, that means that you don't have any problems anymore. The peace that you're going to have is going to the, be the peace like, like, like Jesus spoke over, over that water. When, when, when he saw the winds and the waves, he saw a storm was rising but but even in the midst of a storm Jesus was able to speak peace uh, can I tell somebody in here today that that's what Jesus wants us to be able to do he, he wants us to be able to, to speak peace into the middle of a storm that, that even though everything is jacked up even though everything is messed up that, that nothing is going my way and, and that even though uh, that I'm afflicted on every side Jesus wants us to be able to speak peace in the situation anyway uh, what does that mean he says that I want you to be able to confront that situation and when you confront that situation you give it over to God and you realize that God is in control of the storm and so even though the storms keep on raging huh, even though the wind keeps on blowing huh, I've made up in my mind huh, I'm going to have peace anyway huh. is there anybody in here today huh, who can testify huh, that I want the peace that passes all understanding huh. I need the peace huh, that will guard my heart and mind huh. I need peace huh, uh, that will 
to be a people who have peace in our life. That even when things don't go our way, that even when people turn their backs on us, even when people say things about us that simply are not true, he wants his people to be a people who are willing to deal honestly with situations and have peace in our life. I, I love the quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King, he says that peace is not the absence of the issue, but, but peace is the presence of justice. In, in other words, that when you have the ability to control yourself, to look the devil in the face and say, listen, I'm going to deal with this issue. You can have peace in your life. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed,